Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 41 of our FIFA 15 West Ham United career mode and in today's episode, unlike the usual that we get these days, I'm only going to be doing two games this episode, now don't click off or be annoyed, there is a general, re genuine sorry, reason for that and that's mainly because I wanted to show you sort of more extensive highlights of the Capital One Cup Final, which is the first game of this episode, taking on the mighty Chelsea in the Capital One Cup Final, and then playing Newcastle in the Barclays Premier League. Now, the, the reason why this is a two-game episode will become apparent as the episode evolves. If we could smash 50 likes yet again on this episode, that would be absolutely awesome, like we've been doing recently. I say it every time, but it's genuinely the truth, so if we could smash 50 likes, that would be absolutely awesome. As you can see a moment ago, we will be playing CSK Moscow in the round of 16 of the Europa League after beating Stuttgart through two legs and a penalty shootout last episode. We also managed to beat Spurs last episode, but now moving on to this episode, it is time for the big game. We play Chelsea in the Capital One Cup Final. The second chance we've had to win silverware in this career mode. The first time was the FA Cup Final. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure we lost to Chelsea. Or was that the Community Shield? I can't remember. I actually, for some reason, I can't remember. I'm fairly sure... Whichever, the FA Cup final, I'm pretty sure we lost it, whatever the scenario. So now we play Chelsea to try and redeem ourselves and take revenge here today. Here you can see the starting lineup, Triore and Coyate's defensive mids, because of course Fabian Delph is out injured. So Scherner and Drax are there as the wingers, and Vinaldum and Abubakar also playing. But Chelsea would get the first chance of the match there with Nemanja Matic forcing a good save from Scuffe. In comes the resultant corner, it's headed away. Oh well, it's not quite headed away actually in the end. Winston Reid beaten to it, it's cleared off the line, but it's fallen to Eden Hazard in all sorts of space in the box. And after just seven minutes... Chelsea are ahead again. In the FA Cup final last year, we were cruelly denied by a late goal, a mistake from James Tompkins, and now Chelsea are ahead again. This time, though, a few minutes later, Abubakar is setting through Lasse Schoener, but it's a good save from Petr Cech, and it's dealt with by Chelsea then. But going forward again, the momentum's starting to swing in this game. It's Jorginho Vijnaldum, or Widge Wedge, as I've, knew, uh, as I've now newly named him, and he forces another good save out of Petr Cech. No Theobald Courtois, and also both Azards playing this game, Eden and Thorgan, interestingly enough. Another good save from uh, Scuffe, again from a Nemanja Matic shot, but now Schoener playing forward by Naldum is a save again from Czech, but it falls to Abubakar and it's in the header, bullet header, in off the bar in the end. It just bounces beyond the line and bounces back out again. A very dramatic finish, but it ends with us grabbing the equaliser and we go in at half time at one all there. Thanks to that goal from Abubakar and it started off very shaky with Chelsea getting that goal early on, but we did start to come back into the game. As you can see, the stats just... They, this game can't count, I'm afraid. I don't know why, but those were the, the official match, match stats. Now they're moving into the second half, and Abubakar's been played through the Chelsea defenders falling over each other, and Abubakar sets himself up, composes himself, and puts it past Petr Cech, and we're now in the lead of this game. The final of the Capital One Cup, and we are now in the driving seat, leading this one 2-1, but Widge Wedge going in for the tackle. It's fallen to Abubakar, he gets it back, does Vinaldum, and he scores, and it's 3-1 just eight minutes after we took the 2-1 lead, and after the hour mark, we are beating Chelsea, not just by one goal, but by two Two goals here in this final. 3-1 here at Wembley, but Chelsea are not going to sort of leave this one lying down. But as you can see, some great defending would pretty much be the key to us succeeding in this game, if we were to succeed at all. And there was a period of about 10 minutes where literally Chelsea just tried going forward and everything they did was dealt with by either Cresswell, Reckick or... Uh, or Winston Reid, but as you can see, the game has now ended and we have officially won the Capital One Cup, our first silverware in this entire career mode. It's taken a lot longer than it did on Aston Villa career mode. I think we won the FA Cup in Aston Villa career mode in the first season, but as you can see, the players quite rightfully happy with that, and that wasn't even our first team. Delph out injured, there was no Grognier, uh, there was no Willems as well, because Cresswell had to start because he was tired from the Stuttgart match. So there were a lot of players missing in this final, and as you can see, we have taken the win. 3-1, the confetti falling from the sky and being absorbed into the ground, because it, it doesn't just fall on the ground. Anyway, that's beyond the point. We are now stepping up onto the platform to lift the Capital One Cup, and the first silverware of this career mode is absolutely awesome. I think it's going to be Cheku Koyate who lifts it. No clue why, but he happened to be the captain for this game. I should have probably uh, sort of changed it beforehand, but actually I suppose Koyate was probably one of the one of the only players we could have probably given the captaincy to, but he lifts the trophy now, and we are given the Capital One Cup trophy, and this, this, this is a great start to the episode. Our first silverware in this career mode to start off 
this episode. A very, very good performance in the end from the guys. Beating Chelsea 3-1. We may have got the beating now of Chelsea in career modes. We might have just sussed them out because we obviously beat them last time 1-0 with a goal thanks to Matt Jarvis, who's no longer with us uh, at the club anymore. Um, and then we've beaten them here in this final as well. 3-1 It's Vince on Abubakar who gets the man of the match, of course, with two goals. Unsurprising. Uh, and, of course, setting up the, the, uh, the third as well for Vinaldum or Widgewedge to score a very, very good performance from the guys. And we win the Capital One Cup. But just a day later, after the celebrations, we've actually been offered the manager's job for Liverpool. Now, I'm obviously a Liverpool fan, but... I wasn't really keen on accepting this. This will be the question of the day, however, for today. But this has got to be a landslide victory. Like, not no one says to stay with West Ham for me to do it. Because I do really want to stay with West Ham till the end of the season. But if you guys absolutely uber want me to go to Liverpool, bearing in mind we can't change the team because it's not a transfer uh, window anymore, drop it in the comment section below. Say whether I should take the Liverpool job or not. But I'm just not really sure what we'll be able to do with, uh, with the team. Because we're already competing for the title, weirdly, with West Ham at the moment anyway. Because the, key, the top teams keep stumbling over each other so I'm not really sure it would really mix I suppose it would mix up the players that we use but it wouldn't really change our objective and we wouldn't be able to change the squad anyway drop that in the comment section below and I will read them for next episode however it is time to get into the second and final game of this episode it will become apparent as to why there's only two games in this episode after you see how action-packed this game was but as you can see they're the 4-1-2-1-2 formation with Zarate and the Capital One Cup final hero Abubakar up front but a fantastic block there from Karen Rekic, who starts the game again two games in a row for him for the first time in probably quite some time. He was playing very well. Him and Reed as a partnership was working quite well, actually. Uh, but as you can see, Newcastle with the early exchanges getting the first two shots and chances of the game. Lasse Schoener, though, going forward and forcing a save from Tim Krull. And now Widgewedge or Vinaldum has been set forward here by Zarate. But again, it's a good uh, save there with the foot this time from Tim Krull in the 35th minute. Now going into the second half, as you can see, a lovely give and go there between Cissé and I think it was Gufran. And Cissé hits the post very lucky there but now it's Musa Sissoko going forward he plays it to the back post and it's unmarked uh, as well Papi Cisse sorry is unmarked Willem's not just just not tracking back and it's 1-0 after 55 minutes but straight away Julian Draxler from a header is gonna just nod it in at the, at the near post I think it was Widgewedge or Vinaldum again with the corner in and it's now one all in like two minutes but now Newcastle going forward again and Cissé hitting the post and luckily again we were really living on the edge here and Scuffet gets his hands on it but in the end Riviere who came on for Papi Cissé as a substitute actually gives Newcastle the lead in the 72nd minute and this game's burst into life after the 50th minute as now the Geordies Newcastle take a 2-1 lead Grognier though is coming on for Widgewedge to see if he can try and change things it's 2-1 Grognier's on, he usually changes things up, but Abubakar's just bursting forward, he doesn't even care what's going on. He's managed to find Scherner, who then passes it to Grognier. He's going to try and find a bit of a burst of acceleration and go past James Tompkins, our old player, and he blasts it into the top corner. What a finish from Clement Grognier on his weak foot right into the top corner, and yet another instant response. It took three minutes the first time, this time it takes one minute, one minute sorry, and just three minutes later it's Danny Ings to give us the lead in the 77th minute. This time Grognier setting it up and what an inspired substitution he's been scoring a goal just about literally a minute after coming on after Newcastle had scored and then setting up what would surely be the winner uh, just a few minutes later but would it of course because Newcastle have still got a chance to try and equalize and Remy Cabela I thought he'd scored with that free kick trying to drag it past the post or trying to drag it past the sort of near post there of Scuffe. But in the end, he dragged it too far wide of the post. And it went wide. I thought it was in. I thought they'd equalise right at the death. But we do take the 3-2 win. Grogny as a substitute got man of the match. That pretty much sort of sums up his... Um his influence on the whole game and actually him and Ings the two substitutes in that game combining because Ings came on for Zarate to win us the game a good rating as well for last and as you can see in the background we are of course now the France uh, national team manager because you guys voted for it a few episodes ago instead of being the Poland manager uh, and we're just sort of submitting our first national team uh, well, submission. Our, our first national team squad. As you can see, I was just taking out Mavuba and Toulon because I felt as if we had too many defensive mids in this squad. Also taking out Gonalon as well for our own uh, Clement Grogne. We also put Umtiti into the squad as well as Florian Torvan. And I can't remember who else it was. Oh, Blaise Matuidi as well from PSG. It was, for some reason, not in the squad. Hamuma and a few others in there. No Dimitri Paye for some reason. But nevertheless, in the background, just to end things, you can see 
see the table. It hasn't changed, of course, too much because we've only played one BPL game. Um, but the main thing, of course, in that episode, winning the Capital One Cup. I was desperate to win that because, obviously, we were out of the FA Cup uh, at the hands of Norwich in the fourth round. So that was pretty much only our, our only realistic chance of silverware because it would take quite a lot of effort to win the BPL, quite a lot of effort to win the Europa League. Uh, because we play CSK Moscow in the last 16. You'll see both of those games next episode, as well as a BPL game against Chelsea, and then we'll be into the France stuff uh, with a few international friendlies as well the episode after that. Again, in the background, you can see the table, but I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the 15th career mode with West Ham. Feel free to leave a like if you did. 50 likes yet again would be absolutely awesome, so smash the like button. 50 likes would be awesome. Subscribe if you are new around here as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much, as well as your answer to my question of the day, considering Liverpool again I would rather stay at West Ham but if you guys if you guys landslide victory uh, sort of Liverpool then I'm gonna have to obviously aren't I because it's what you guys would want but I personally would prefer to go with West Ham nevertheless it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a good day enjoy yourselves and goodbye